Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this on the multimeter. I want to see if it's drawing more power. Again, there's my Tesla coil. There's my gravity flyer. And I'm going to put the wire down the Tesla coil and I'm going to check and see exactly what we got here. I also got a temperature device so we can check the uh, transistor and see how we're doing on that and what it heats up to. So, let's get started with this. We are right now reading 12.4. So let's see if it's accurate. Twelve point three. We're doing pretty good. Okay. So I got a baseline now. We know we're doing good. Turn this thing up. Let's check it. Our coil is on. So now we're just going to attach our wire down this hole. We are on. We're on right there, yep. Just took a minute. Okay, now. 36, let's see if it matches still. Thirty-six, still drawing thirty-six. Okay. Definitely not seventy six, I could tell you that. That yeah, might be right. Staying consistent. Let's move it back a little bit. See if that does the trick. We are at 85.75. Let's heat it up a little bit. We're reading 43. Let's go ahead and just test it and make sure. I still got 43, 49, is it 49, yeah 49, this says 43, so a little off now, pulling a little bit more, let's see what we heat it up to, oh we hit over 100 degrees on this thing, Well, that's not good, but it's still working. I hope we don't fry it. We're at 49 now, which I don't think that number is going to be right. Let's check it. Oh, I can I can smell this thing now. Okay, hold on. We got a fire going on. Okay, what do we got? Is my wire on fire again? Probably. All right. Make sure there's nothing over here on fire. No. Nope. All right. Let's see if we can't run this real quick. Bring it back up. Okay. Okay, well that's not good. 
Might have overheated my power source. My MOS set is so good. Nope. Alright, we're going to have to pause and come back to this then because that thing's overheating. I got to see why. Okay, so what blew up is my actual transistor. What I did was I overheated it. So it can't handle any more than what I'm giving it. So let's just run this. I'm going to run it up to uh, our operating now. And I'm going to check the amp load on it. Okay, we're at about 32. Gonna check. We're not getting hot. We're good. Okay, we'll just... Lights on. We're good. Okay. So, okay. Find it. Sorry, new multimeter. Not used to it yet. Uh, I need amps. I need DC. Okay, so... Okay, we got 584. I got a shine on this thing. There we go. We're almost at 6 amps. Okay, we're at 38 volts. Okay, we hit 40 volts. 7.24 on our amps. And we're still good. We're in operating temperature here. Let's see if I can turn this. So we're good there. And 72 degrees, 71, right in there. Okay. So for those of you who wanted to know what our load was at 40 volts, this is our amps right here. 7.24 amps. So with that, we're good to run this thing all day with no issue. Now let's go ahead and put the wire down it and let's find out. You know, maybe I'll take this burnt wire and clip it. Might be a good idea. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hook up the amp load right now. I want to see if it goes up. I want to shove this wire in there, so... Connect it. Okay. I got it next to it. It's in there now. Oh. Nope, that didn't go up. Okay, so let's switch it over now. Let's go back to our volt. Reading 40 volts, that's what I'm reading on the gauge here, so we're good there. Put it next to it. Still reading 40. Okay, it's down in the Tesla coil now. And it's still reading 40, so everything's still operating the same when it goes in there. That's interesting. So, let's look at one more thing here. It might just be the frequency of the coil that we're doing. So, take a look at the uh, spark right here. Low. Put this in there, immediately it goes up. And that might just be what it is. Oh, if I could stop touching this stuff together, man, and hold a camera at the same time. Oh, there we go. 
As soon as you add a bigger load, it's going to change our frequency. So that's what we're doing here. Kind of crazy, huh? I might need to put more winds in the primary so that I can adjust it for the whole gravity flyer unit. That way our uh, secondary operates properly. But then he doesn't change his when it Lexi does it. So maybe it's an imbalance that he's looking for. Or maybe, to be honest with you, because we're looking at this gravity flyer probably wrong. Tesla coil is simply a capacitor to the ground. Now that our gravity flyer is connected to the top, it has now become a capacitor to the ground. If you watch my paper lifter experiment, it will tell you that you can use the ground as the negative in a high voltage circuit if you change it to uh, static bolts. So, by putting the static bolts in the plate, and we're taking this top plate here, and we're driving it down to our bottom plate, all, all of the positive from here driving it straight down through the plate into the bottom plate, right? But it's got to go through the center plate first. Because the Tesla coil does not have a positive and negative field to it, it's a neutral field. Now by taking all of the positive that goes from this and driving it down into this plate, we now make the Tesla coil voltage now match this voltage here that comes from our high voltage or our static volts because they're basically the same thing it'll actually change this right here from being a neutral field into whatever field is coming through here. Whether that be positive or negative, whichever one it turns out to be, is what is changing. So, now that we know that, we can now figure out exactly what we're looking at here. If it is correct, then he's taken inspiration from T.T. Brown and made a capacitor to the ground and it will create lift. So that's the theory anyway. That's why it looks like it's proven out to what we're doing here. We're not getting more draw, which I thought for sure we were going to. I'm getting a different frequency, which I should have expected. And now I guess I do. So I guess that pretty much says what it is. So we can define it as that now. And now that when we get our transfer in here, from you know point to point we can figure out exactly what's going on here I did pick up a new meter for that I picked up one of these I saw Jared use it and it could tell me the electrostatic charge on the plate so as soon as I replace those motors we're gonna go ahead and use that and we're gonna find the answer here guys find out exactly if that field changes or not and uh, I think it's gonna tell us a lot if it does change then it would explain what's going on here. It would explain we're creating a capacitor to the ground. We're creating maybe what? If the ground's negative and the gravity flyer is positive, it's sucked down. But if it goes negative, which is harder to do, and we can repel from the ground up, and it'll create a, create a jump. So anyway, that's the theory. We're starting to you know figure everything out and fine tune it. But hopefully that helps you guys out in uh, your gravity flyer experiments going through this uh, coil and seeing exactly what the uh, amps and the volts are and if it's doing it but my not not anything over you know what seven and a half amps or seven and a quarter or something like that 7.24 is what I think it said so nothing over that for that that uh, transistor there so anyway thanks guys if you like what you saw today, please like, share, subscribe, do all those fun things, and have yourself a great day.